A. Find y of pi if dy on dx is equal to x squared minus pi cos x and y0 equals 1. B. Find d squared y over dx squared and d cubed y over dx cubed where y is as described in A. OK. Well, let's see. A. dy on dx is x squared minus pi cos x. So, to get y, we need to integrate to get rid of that dy on dx. So, that would be y when we integrate that side. When we integrate the other side, let's see, x squared, so we put the power up by 1, and we divide by the new power, OK, minus pi cos x. Well, minus pi is just a constant, so that would just stay where it is. And I'd multiply it by whatever the integral of cos x was. And the integral of cos is plus sine. So sine x. And then there'd be some constant, um, because when you integrate, um, you there could be any constant on the end, and we don't know which one it is yet. So for some... C in R. OK. Now, how do we figure out what C is? Uh, we're told that Y of 0 is 1. OK. Y of 0 is 1. And Y of 0 would be a third times 0 cubed minus pi times sine 0 plus C, which is equal to 1. And 0 cubed is 0. Sine 0 is 0, so C equals 1. So therefore, Y is equal to a third of X cubed minus pi sine X plus 1, because C is really 1. OK, good, we've found that. Let's just um, start a new page. So, it says now to find d squared y on dx squared and d cubed y on dx cubed. Well, d squared y on dx squared is the second derivative, which means to get it, we differentiate the derivative. So, b, we know what dy on dx is. Let me write that out again. x squared minus pi cos x. So, that's the first derivative. To get the second derivative, we differentiate it again. So that would be the derivative of x squared. So we put the current power at the front and reduce the power by 1. So that would be x to the 1. OK. Derivative, um, that pi is just a constant, so we get to leave it there. The derivative of cos is minus sine. All right, so that's actually equal to 2x plus pi sine x. And then the third derivative we differentiate again. So d cubed y dx cubed. So the derivative of 2x is just 2. And then we differentiate pi sine x. So the pi stays there and we times by the derivative of sine x. So derivative of sine is plus cos. And so that's the third derivative, which is all we needed to do.